Hey guys, Mighty Gazelle here, back with more reading the My Hero Academia manga. This is chapter 371, the unofficials dropped today. Um, if you'll notice, I have sunlight in my room. Uh, that's because I'm actually recording this at 2 in the afternoon. I made the mistake of staying up until 4.30 or 5, I don't know, it was, it was late, uh, waiting for this chapter. Usually, these always used to drop around like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. at the worst. Sometimes you'd even get as early as 12 at midnight, uh, Pacific time for me. Was not the case. Uh, this is not the first time this has happened in recent weeks, so I might just um, adjust accordingly and just sleep and then wake up like in the morning sometime, like 8, and just record it then. Um, so it's my own fault. Uh, but yeah, that's why this is getting out later than normal. Uh, all the same, though, thank you guys for stopping by and watching with me or reading with me. Uh, so, this chapter, chapter 371, uh, before I begin, I just want to give my two cents on something, uh, the only thing I know about this chapter is that it continues the Shoji and Spinner plotline, shocker, that's where we just left off, um, I'm gonna see so many people complaining, and just, I just want to say, like, you can just, you can just be honest and say you just don't care about Shoji, Spinner, and Koda, like, just save everyone time and say that because it'd be like way easier. Um, because everyone's saying like, Oh, this is so out of left field. Why is he getting a story now? Um, this is incredibly boring and lame. And, uh, you guys know me, I'm a, I'm a class one, a Homer. I think that they're like my favorite part of the show. So this stuff really interests me. So I guess this opinion is going to be biased, but I find this extremely interesting. And if you're a My Hero Academia fan, if you're a true My Hero, My Hero Academia fan, and you don't think that the topic of quirk racism isn't interesting, and the and the someone's driving by on a loud motorcycle, apologies. Um, if you don't think that the topic of quirk racism and how people deal with it isn't interesting, and you you're actually bored by this, um, I kind of feel bad for you. That's all I really got to say. Um, and. Like, Horikoshi's always done this with, like, flashbacks and characters. I had a rant about this on Twitter. I'm not going to go about it again. Link in the description for my Twitter. It's, like, one of my most recent posts. Um, explaining why, like, backstory stuff with character progression is how Horikoshi's always done these character moments. And it doesn't matter if Shoji had set up back in Chapter 10 or if it's it's happening now. Like, obviously, yeah, it'd be nice to have some sort of, like... A little bit more of a setup earlier on, but it doesn't really bother me too much because if it's still done really well and really interesting, because you're not what you're not going to have Shoji's face reveal back in like the camp raid arc, right? Like back in chapter 100. Like, what if Deku's like fighting muscular and we just got to cut away? Like, was like Shoji's like, oh, I have to tell you guys about my dark past right now. Like, what? No, that wouldn't make any sense. Um, I think now is the perfect time for the face reveal and all that. So. Uh, sorry for the rant. I know we're only a few minutes in, but uh, I, I, I let's just say I'm really happy about this, and I'm excited to see what happens. Chapter 371. Together with Shoji-kun, consider the well-being of the hospital. We get a narration box as we get uh, that hospital in the far distance with the broken bridge close to us. What is going on in the muddy consciousness of Spinner? That's another aspect I'm kind of curious about, how they're going to handle Spinner here. I swear, says Shoji, which uh, his whole mask is off. And he, uh, dude, I think his design is awesome. I think that like the face reveal is great. He's got scarring going from the, he's got like the Joker scarring kind of like, but it goes even farther. It goes like around his neck. Really kind of sad. Um, I swear if the answer is no, I'll never forgive you. Cause that was, he left off by the last chapter by saying like, uh, like, how are you guys good compared to the people who, like, evacuated the people and whatnot? Something like that. Um, and Spinner thinks to himself, if I has considered, you hurt me. What the deal with you? <clears throat> so clearly Spinner's, like, losing his mind, which is really sad. Um, the, the tale of Spinner is a very tragic one, and I'm kind of curious to see where they go with this. Um, and we got Coda. That Shoji Kun's voice, he thinks to himself. What's up with that brat? Says uh, some of the other people who are fighting. Those are some serious scars. Yeah, but... 
So are they gonna have sim? Oh, are they gonna have sympathy for Shoji because he's like one of them and he's got like scars? So maybe they'll realize that he's gone through shit too. Man, you got it. We'll follow you. We'll take Kuroguri back, right? Please, uh, preach to them the justice you speak of. All of them are shouting. We get a we get a bunch of different looking guys. We get a pig man. He's got like a pig nose. Uh, another guy. He's got like a tentacle arm. Uh, just a bunch of unique designs in here. Um. And we get a spinner who's looking pretty dumb. He's like, oh, oh, ha, no idea. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing, but it's actually really sad. Um, it's just the expression on his face and he's drooling. Dude, spinner, uh, okay, spinner isn't one of my favorite characters or anything, but I think he's been done so dirty in the anime. And now that we're seeing him like, used this way in the manga. It's very sad. It's not bad storytelling. It's actually, it just makes all for one more of a douchebag, uh, which is always, you know, nice seasoning for him. Um, no idea, says Spinner. The followers say, no idea. They're, they're kind of paused. And we get this spider guy up on the roof who revealed his face earlier. Listen up. He means people have no idea how much we've suffered. That brat Spinner ain't helping either. That brat and Spinner and help. Okay, so this guy's trying to cover for the fact that like Spinner's kind of a moron right now. Um, he was probably sent here for this reason to kind of like keep the mob focused. Um, he's he's trying his best here. Onwards we go, and then we get. Oh, okay. So yeah, the the, the angry mob actually kind of paused for a second, and then they go back to fighting. Uh, very interesting. So. I wonder if that's the way that this arc is going to go. Like the, the crowd's going to lose like faith in him or they're going to get like, uh, they're going to lose their passion or something. Oh, whoa. We got a shot of a uh, Shoji looking badass right here. This is crazy. Spinner. This attack will set our cause back by 30 years. <laughs> oh, wow. They're just, they're just straight up diving into it. <clears throat> Fascinating. Shut up, says Spinner. And we get a flashback to all for one giving him the quirk. I really don't. And then all for one says, if you're going to use durability, then this one should help. Oh, he's only up a two. So he's giving him two, two, uh, two, uh, powers. I technically it'd be three. Cause he got gigant gigantification, right? If you're going to use, so he has durability. Maybe durability makes him bigger. That's possible. Uh, anyway, holds up to, uh, serious. I really don't, seriously and we get oh my god we get some like scales popping up from his like neck and stuff ow and there's like blood squirting out scale armor i'll grant you raw strength heightened defense and the appearance of a true leader uh that's that's so creepy that all for one like did this to him be fine with anything spinner thinks to himself we get a Shigaraki shot, old Shigaraki, like before, um, this has got to be before his, uh, experimentation was done on him. You used to play League of Legends? <laughs> Is that what he said? LOL? You used to play LOL? Is that, that's, that's abbreviation for League of Legends, right? You used to play League of Legends? Me too. Though I always played solo. <laughs> no way that's real. No way. Shigaraki, they both play League of Legends. I guess technically Spinner was like a gamer. We got like his backstory, but Shigaraki playing it? Can you imagine back at like All for, All for One's headquarters as like a kid? You just see uh, young Shigaraki or Tomura playing League of Legends. Man. Oh, uh, yeah. Spinner's covered in a lot of scale armor now, and there's just blood squirting out of him. It's really nasty. And we get a shot of Shoji, who I guess he gets hit or punched or something. Oh, no, he gets hit with a sword. Oh my god, and it cut off a few of his hands, but we know that's fine, because uh, typically it's the hands that he has like, grown, so they grow back. Um, good all, press forward, says uh, this monster-looking spinner here, who, like, he looks like Godzilla, if I'm being honest. He, all the scales and the way his back spine is forming, maybe that's the goal, maybe to look, make him look like Godzilla, but shit. Wow. Okay, so they're they're fighting very high up in the air alongside the side of a skyscraper. And Shoji gets hit to this. I can't believe we're getting a badass, like, up-close Shoji fight. How cool. 
Um, Good all press forward, he shouts. <laughs> He's talking like a moron still. Uh, Shoji tanks the blow, makes a bunch of arms to like block it. Still though, that's gotta hurt. Like even if, even if, like, by the way, uh, Japan has intense sense like disembodiment laws. So I'm kind of curious. I mean, they're gonna censor the shit out of this in the anime because like, they ca- you can't show like dismembered limbs in Japan. There's like a there's like a whole history there if you want to look it up. But yeah, this this is gonna get censored hard in the anime because uh, a lot of his hands are getting cut off. Um, so he gets hit. Um. But he, he's still okay, though, because he's just growing more arms. <clears throat> and then Kota shouts, Shoji-kun! He's down on the ground. The spider guy uh, continues to shout orders. Everyone, let's follow in the footsteps of our leader. Let's grasp the courage and strike back at our oppressors. The revolution requires martyrdom. The blood spilled today will benefit the future of all heteromorphs. And we get uh, Kota looking very upset. <clears throat> he's gritting his teeth and looking up at what, everything that's going on. This can't be serious. Shoji Kun is. Shoji Kun is. We're getting a flashback. We get black panels. Okay. Oh, we get Class One A in their dorm. Okay. All right. I'm down with this. I'm totally down. You guys know me. Well, maybe I should check something. Okay. Shoji Kun is, and we get uh, yeah, all of them sitting around. Oh, it, oh, okay. Oh. Okay, they're actually showing, um, so Shoji is taking off his mask, and I guess he's, like, telling everyone his story. Um, they're all sitting around a table, eating food, listening to him. And then you get a shot of, uh, Tokoyami, Kaminari, and Deku looking on at him. Because Shoji takes off his mask, and he points to his, like, his hand on his, uh, or his face on his, one of his hands. Oh my god, we're gonna get, we're, yeah, we're getting a straight up backstory. Okay, I'm actually really really interested in this. Okay, so we're seeing young Shoji <clears throat> getting beat up by a bunch of like villagers. They look like farmers, which adds to the um if you're out in the boonies or like in the, the countryside, that's where this racism was the worst, I guess. Like they mentioned before, like the city people had it easy. Um, which fits here. It looks like a lot of farmers and stuff. My parents didn't have arms like mine. I come from a horrific backwater village, yeah, uh, where pure blood was so important they'd even take arms to to children to keep things pure. Oh my god. Okay, we're getting dark. Others like Tokoyami or Koda, all those born in cities, they think things like that are behind them. Okay, yeah, so they reiterate, like, different. Like, if you grew up in the city, like Mina, I, I was saying on the, the Discord too, Mina technically would have had this sort of thing too. But it's different because, like, she's still mostly human-looking, and I think most people consider her very pretty. So even if she was in the countryside, I know I, I'm sure in the country, but she was born in the she was raised in the city, as we know from the flashback with Kirishima and stuff. <clears throat> Others like Koda or Tokiyami, all those born in the cities, I think things like that are behind them. But there are still so many messed-up places where folks won't even blink an eye at murdering children for the sake of purity. Wow. And we get Mina looking pissed. She's like clenching a fist and grinning her teeth. Yeah, I go Mina. Dude, she's the best. Um, that's disgusting. The world would be better off if they were dead. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing Mina's the one saying this. That's disgusting. The world would be... Uh, damn. Okay, I want to see the official translations for that. Because I don't think Mina would ever wish death on someone. But we'll, we'll see. Um, Shoji says, that's all well and good. But prejudice would still exist. Shoji says, and we get Manana looking sad. I called you an octopus. Oh my god, yeah! That's a callback way back when. Remember when they're doing the strength test, like way back in season one? He was like, oh my crap, you're like an octopus. He's like he's squeezing the, the weight thing. Um Wow. How do I remember that so well? <laughs> I guess I guess season one's kind of burned in my mind. I've seen it so many times. Um he continues, I'm sorry, I don't think you're gross or anything like that, Mineta says. He starts crying, running towards Shoji. Shoji responds, it's natural to think of an octopus when you see my arms. I mean, my hero name is Tentacle. Yeah, he's embracing it. And I myself like to watch stuff like the most villain-looking heroes ranking. Which Gang Orca is... Was Gang Orca number one? 
No, I don't know. Um, I'm not bothered by it, so don't you worry, he says. And even his little coffee mug has a little squ- like octopus squid on it. That's kind of cute. Nice detail. I'm loving this. Dude, yes, this warms my heart. I just like, I love learning more about Class 1A. Even the, even the horrific stuff. I'm, I'm there for it. <clears throat> Shoji continues, however, these scars and the fact that I'm a heteromorph really give a specific impression. As we get a shot, a close up of his scars. That that's why I wear a mask. I don't want people thinking I'm out for retribution. Wow, some great depth here. That that's awesome. Tokayami replies, "That is true strength because Tokayami is one of the people who suffers most from like the heteromorphism. His head's literally a bird." Um, <clears throat> I have a ton of painful memories and no way I shall ever forget them as he drinks from his coffee or tea. It could be tea. I'm not sure. It's something black, but oh, and we're getting a flashback of the, the waves again. Uh Oh, my theory was like he was at these waves cause he was contemplating, you know, ending his life. Uh, let's see. Let's see what, Oh, there's someone drowning instead of dwelling on that. It's a little girl. Oh, and Shoji saves her. Oh, and he uses his arms to like reach out far enough to get her. I chose to embrace the happy memory of the one time I was overjoyed to have this body of mine. Whoa. Oh, that's so good. Go Shoji. I was completely wrong about that scene. No, he was at the ocean because he was saving a little girl who was drowning and he was able to reach her because of the duple arms. Wow. Oh, that's so good. I love that. She's crying. She's happy to be saved by him. And he's happy to be saved. <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> and then we get Mina, Kirishima, and Kaminari, the gang. I love those three. <laughs> Stop. That's so sad. We won't just let you have one. <laughs> I don't want them to have just one good memory. <laughs> From now on, we'll make a ton as they go in for a big group hug of happy memories between us all. As, as, uh, dude, oh my god, mad respect to everyone who just dove in and gave him a hug. Of course, it's like some of my favorites here. Um, <clears throat> this is the comfiest spot, says Sue. She jumps. Oh, okay, that is wholesome. That is wholesome shit. How do you not like this? <laughs> Okay, so I need to describe. So basically, he's sitting on his chair, and uh, Mina, Kaminari, Koda, Mineta, and Sue all dive underneath his big arms, and they give him a hug. And of course, it's Mina, the one who comes in for the big up body hug, just to give him a big hug. I love that. Oh, that's great. And if you think about it, like, uh, most of the ones who give him the hug are the ones who also have uh, heteromorphism. Not Kaminari, uh, and not really Mineta, although kind of, his hair is really weird. But anyway, that's not really, doesn't really count. Mina, Koda, and even Sue has uh, heteromorphism. Uh, not to the extent of, like, most people, but, you know, her face is kind of frog-like. She's got a long-ass tongue, and, you know. Um, and Shoji says, yeah. And then you get her, like, comfy, comfy. <laughs> that's so all right, chalk that up as one moment. I can't wait to see animated. That's that's amazing. And we get Koda looking up at him like puppy dog eyes. I don't think that over a century of prejudice will be over in our lifetime. According back to the present. That's why I'll continue the efforts of those who came before me. As we get Koda pushing people aside. And, uh, whoa, his head looks weird. Does his head always look like that? Oh no, it was like a sound effect coming from it. Is he getting... I swear, if Coda gets a quirk awakening right here... Holy crap. I shall carry that torch. Become the world's coolest hero. And then I'll pass this good memory onto the next generation. As we get a badass shot of... Close to us, it's Spinner. And up in the air, it's Shoji. Making a whole bunch of duple arms. Dude, he, he, you are cool, Tentacle. You're amazing. Oh my gosh. He shouts, I too have suffered from discrimination. Our oppressors will never be on the right. But isn't there another way? As we get, oh. Oh, that's a great callback. 
So this is this is several shelters turn me away. No header remorse allowed. They said, okay. So back when Deku was kneeling in front of uh, UA, the building, um, uh, the the fox lady, the giant fox lady that everyone simps over, um, her and Tentacle actually had an interaction. I think they just like. I don't know what they said anything to each other, but you see them like shaking hands or something. So that's wow. Okay. <clears throat> I don't care. Tear it down. Shouts spinner still acting kind of like a just imbecile monster. Shoji says, think carefully on how to channel your rage. After all, we're the ones who carry these scars. Oh my God. This is going extremely hard. <laughs> who would have th- thought Shoji? Shoji. What have such a badass mini arc? This is great. And then all the people are looking back at this fight going on. And then the spider guy says, if such an argument was enough, we wouldn't have gathered so many. You don't give us concrete alternatives. You're just showing your bloated ego as he puts his thumb on his head. And he's just like, I don't know if that's like a sign for calling someone an idiot or something, but like I, that's something like that. It shows just how you've been domesticated by the humans. You lost your fighting will. Oh my god. Okay, yep, yep. Coda's getting a quirk awakening. Coda is getting a quirk awakening. <laughs> um, okay, so a gigantic flock of birds. And presumably other animals. I can't really tell. It's mostly just birds. But... I'm talking like a thousand plus birds are swarming the spider guy. And he turns around and he's like, oh, shit. Um, and we got Coda. Don't you dare laugh at Shoji-kun. And his head is like erupting like a horn or something. Whoa. I don't, I, I don't even know what to say. Shoji. Uh, Coda. Okay, so let's count the people in class 1A who have had a quirk awakening. Bakugo, uh, I guess you would technically have to say Deku, although that's a unique circumstance. Uh, Ida, technically, although it's not really a quirk awakening, he did the family recipe secret thing um, where you you open up like another valve or whatever. Um, Uraraka still hasn't. Momo hasn't, I don't think. Todoroki, I guess, kind of has. Yeah, I'd argue. I'd argue Todoroki has had a quirk awakening of sorts. Um, I think that's about it. So then you add add Coda into that. Cody Coda's in a very exclusive group. That's impressive. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm probably missing someone, but uh, <clears throat> he's got Shoji building up an attack with his amalgamation of arms. Disgusting, says Spinner. What can I say? Replies Shoji. It's just who I am. <laughs> That's badass. <laughs> oh, this is a good chapter. That's the end of the chapter. Challenging adversity. 371 end. Wow. This is good. This is a really good chapter. I love seeing I love seeing the backstory of Shoji and the classmates all hugging him. It makes me so happy that Mina. Is the one who get who went in for the biggest hug of all. That's great, but like the they picked the people to go in for the hug that I, you just expect to like. Oh wait, is Kirishima? Kirishima's in there too, right? Oh yeah, Kirishima's right next to Mina. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Kirishima's right next to Mina. They're both going in like it's Kaminari on the right on his left arm underneath his big left arm. You have Kaminari, uh, and then uh. Kirishima and then Mina. And then on the other side, you have Koda, Mineta, and uh, Sue. Oh my god. I, I love them. They're the they're the heart the heart cakes of uh class 1A. You know, they're they're like the the wishy-washy emotional ones, and I love them for it. Um That's so great. They picked the perfect ones for that. I guess you could have also thrown in like Uraraka or something, but uh no, they, they picked the good ones for that. That's so cute. That's like my favorite. That's like my favorite panel of this entire thing is that big group hug. <laughs> all right. Um, kind of said all I needed to say. Uh, sorry again for getting this out late. I need to adjust in the future. If, if, if it continues to upload at really 
weird times, like five or six a.m., then I need to uh, adjust accordingly and just go ahead and sleep earlier. I usually stay up, but I'll sleep early and get up earlier. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And then tomorrow, uh, less than twenty four hours from now, actually uh, about twelve. Uh, yeah, 12 hours from now, we get uh, the new episode of the anime. So stay tuned for that. If you guys like this video, consider liking, subscribing, all that. And uh, stay tuned for more content. Till next time, it's been Mighty Gazelle. Hoping you all have a mighty day. See you guys.